What's up guys? We are here on YouTube with our first poker vlog and it's a big one. This is a review of my final table in the Poker Atlas $1.5 million guaranteed title event where I had my biggest career cash to date. And this all happened within my first or second week of moving to Dallas to pursue this passion of playing poker and creating content. So this is a fun one. Hope you guys enjoy. We're going to be pushing hard on YouTube. So subscribe, like, comment, you guys know the deal. Enjoy the show. All right, so let's get right into it. And let me give you a little bit of context on this final table. So we're sitting 5.7 million in chips, which is exactly right in the middle. We're sitting fifth in chips and we're coming back to 75K, 150K, 150K. So we're sitting just under 40 big blinds, which is more than enough at a final table. And obviously we got four shorter stacks. Um, so me going into this final table, the strategy wasn't go crazy. Nothing's, it was, it was pretty standard for the most part. Really, only thing I really wanted to do was avoid very, very big marginal pots until, you know, the short stacks were busted out of the tournament. And that's really where my head was at. And I didn't want to try anything new. Um, this was a spot that I've looked at and studied for a long time. So I felt pretty comfortable going into this final table. So let's get right into the first hand of the day. And this is a fun one. We have a under the gun limp from Trung and it folds around to us where we look down at 7-6 offsuit. Um, the graphics are not updated yet at TCH live stream. So you're not going to be able to see it, but you're going to have to just trust me. You're going to see it when we flip over the hands anyway. But we have 7-6 offsuit and we flop the nuts. We flop the nuts. And um, we check it over and Trong bets 250,000 into a pot of 450. Um, this was immediately a spot where I thought about raising. I thought that raising was extremely, extremely strong. And when I think about his range and his limping range from under the gun, it's going to be a lot of smaller pairs. So he could have sets and he could have a lot of suited aces um not as small suited aces like ace five suited ace four suited ace, ace three suited um and some lot of suited connectors as well so that's what i was thinking in my head and i think going back i do think that this is probably a hand that i want to just start raising it doesn't matter if we don't maximize value but against the hands that we talked about some sets some suited aces some suited connectors i think this is a great hand to start just building pot and it, it, he is a type of player who would probably call us down as well. Um, so this is something that probably in hindsight that I want to start building, making it maybe 3x to 750k bet turn and then shove river. Um, just put him in a really, really gross spot early on. And I mean, we have the nuts. We have the nuts. And this is something, although like I kind of thought about it as in like, oh, we have the nuts. I want to kind of slow play this. I don't know. In hindsight, I think trying to really maximize value here is the way to go. But the way played 250K, I call the turn goes check, check. There's 1.1 million in the river. And I decide to go for a pretty larger sizing here. Um, let me see what I pick. Yes, 725,000. Um, so just under five big blinds and around 75% uh, bet-ish, um, just slightly under. Um, but I like this sizing. I think we could even go bigger if we wanted to. But I uh, really, my mindset in these tournaments is get paid. And what sizing is it going to get paid? I don't really worry about GTO so much. I worry about is this bet going to get called? And that was the sizing that I picked to target some lower pairs, target some suited aces. Um, and obviously now a four liner, any two makes a straight. So I don't think he was going to call anything larger. Maybe I could have gone slightly more, maybe a pot size bet, but that was that was the size that I decided to pick. And in the end, after Trunk thinks about it for a while, he calls and he shows us ace three suited, I believe. So yeah, he ends up rivering two pair and obviously I had the nuts the whole way so we pick up a big one we pick up a 1.4 million 10 big blind pot immediately on the first hand so we are off to an amazing start slick rick uh flops the straight and will take down the first pot 
our next big hand of the day we have our first all in dustin goes all in with 2.2 million from the hijack i believe with a7 off i don't have much but jason decides to call um and it is a7 against a7 so we go to the run out and it's chop chop so the first all in of the day um results in no blood all right here we go next hand next big hand we are sitting under the gun with i believe king queen offsuit and we raise it up we min click it to 300k it folds around yeah it folds around to the short stack in the small blind who jams for 650k obviously i have only 300k more i have two big blinds more to call so obviously this is just a snap call from me let's go to the run out it's king queen versus king queen yeah, we have the clubs. We are the one with the clubs, the king queen offsuits, and it's a monotone board. And it's just a, such a sick way to go out for poor. But we cooler him for the first elimination of the day. I mean, an unbelievable start for us. The first hand flopping the nuts, and then second king queen offsuit versus king queen suited, rivering a flush to get the first elimination. Just a dream start at this final table, and really, yeah, just just a dream start. All right. Let's see who wins here. Oh, Are you the free roll, three clubs. Oh, no Four way. is in trouble here. No, no and way. The negative free roll. No way. Oh, no way. Oh, there it is. That's that just not right. That's oh, just not yeah. right. Look, look, even it's the players. Simple. They, even the players. <laughs> That's just not right. Yeah, so now going into the prize pool, we just knocked out the ninth place player to lock up $34,000. So a $9,000 pay jump. Next pay jump is $43,000. So let's go to the next hand. All right, here we go. Next hand of the day. We're still at 75K, 150K hand, number 17. And Dustin shoves once again for 2.1 million. That is 14 big blinds? Yeah. Yeah, can I do the math? Yeah, 14 big blinds. After Jason raises from the hijack. So he only has 1.4 million to call. I guess 10 bigs. I mean, it's it's sizable. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a small jam. It's not an auto call by any means. And Jason shows King Jack suited against Dustin's ace queen suited. So we're essentially going to a 60 40. And let's see the flop. It's a king high flop for Jason. So can we get second elimination of the final table? And that's that. Dustin is knocked out. That's the way it goes sometimes, guys. And yeah two quick eliminations which is not something you see all the time but it's 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 going quick so we get another pay jump we're sitting in uh we locked up seventh now for forty three thousand dollars already the the highest um career cash for us so we're sitting we're yeah we're excited we got a good chip stack we're just chilling we got 47 big blinds and on to the next all right next hand and another shorty yeah after cord actually sorry after cord raises under the gun for 400k chris shoves ace queen suited for 2.8 mil pretty good spot for chris um an obvious shove spot in my opinion and eduardo puts it in on the button with eight i'm not sure about this play particularly i don't think eights is a call here at all given uh the dynamic i think eduardo is dominated a lot of time i'm not sure i think nines and tens become close but yeah i don't think eight i think eight is at the bottom especially given some of the icm implications given that if he's wrong he's he's dropping down but he has chips to play with so i'm not sure about this one but i think eight is probably a fold if i had eights i think i would be probably folding in my eyes but here we go i mean another big flip ace queen versus eights it's a flip it's a flip um next page jump fifty two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars it's going to be a big one. It's an ace high board. Chris gets there on the flop and the river's an eight. It's just disgusting sometimes, man. He Eduardo finds the two outer to knock out Chris for $43,000. Uh, Chris is a great player. He's one of the toughest player at this table. So obviously sad to see him go, but good for us in terms of the table dynamics. So we locked up $52,880. We're sitting great. We got a lot of hope. I am... Yeah, very, very excited at this point. Let's go to the next hand. Okay, this is a hand that will haunt me and that still haunts me to this day. So we're going to go in depth with this one and talk a lot about it. And yeah, this this one hurts, guys. This one, this one really hurts. I'm not going to lie. I've thought a lot about this hand now. 
I've thought about every single thing imaginable. And yeah, this one hurts, but let's get right into it. I'm in the hijack with Ace-9 suited. An obvious open from my eyes. I think we have, yeah, we have around 45, 46 big blinds. An obvious open. We make it 325k, just above two bigs. Trunk folds and cord in the button with 7-6 offsuit. Decides to make the call. Obviously a very, very loose call from Cord. Cord is a professional player with, I think, over 3 million in live earnings, um, a very good tournament player. And he's been very, very loose starting from day two and continuously in the final table. He has one of the chip leads at this table. So putting enormous amount of pressure on everyone and decides to call in position against my open with 7-6 offsuit. Obviously a very, very loose call. So let's go to the flop. It's not a good one. Jack 6-6. Six, six. It's a board that I will bet sometimes and I will check sometimes. I think given ICM, I want to pot control as much as possible. So I check it over and core bets pretty tiny, 350K. Um, with backdoor flush shots holding ace high, I don't think we're going anywhere to this sizing just yet, um, especially given cord. If he's flatting 7-6 offsuit, he's floating a lot of hands. So he has a lot of bluffs in this situation. So we're going to float one time and head to the turn. And we're going to see a bad turn. We're going to see an ace. So at this point, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I'm like, oh, this is a good spot. This is a very good spot. We're going to figure out later that it's not. Um, but we check it over once again. I think we're going to do this almost entirely with range when we check it over. And cord makes a pretty big sizing. 1.4, uh, 1.1 million. So just above half pots. Obviously, guys, when we pair an ace, we're not going anywhere on this turn. It just not something we're going to do after we float flop. I think this is, yeah, this is a pretty easy call in my eyes. I, I, I don't think there's anything we can do here. I don't think we raise. I don't think we fold. I think this is one of the stronger holdings we're going to have in this situation. So we're going to call. The river is a deuce. So it does bring in a flush and cord snap bets. 3 million. So essentially almost a pot size bet. It's a massive bet. This one put me into the tank and this, I, I thought about this for a long time. These were the couple things that I was thinking, obviously, do I beat his value hands? Some of them, some of them, right? Because we chop with a lot of ace X, we chop with ace 10, we chop a lot of ace nines, we chop a lot of ace eight, we chop with ace five, etc. Would they play this way? I don't think so. So the answer kind of was actually, we yeah, we don't really beat value hands. The value Value hands that he has are a lot of flushes, um, a lot of sixes, which, you know, in my eyes, he shouldn't have much of. He should have some A6 suited. He should have seven, six suited, eight, six suited, but there's not that many combos of, right? And for me, that's where my head was, but that's where the value hands, right? So we're not really beating the value hands. And now that's the checklist I go through. Do we beat value hands? Okay, not really. Number two, what are his bluffs? And my answer on this was he has a lot of bluffs because if he's flatting seven, six offsuit, he's flatting adding almost every connector every offsuit connectors there's so many hands that he has here king queens king tens ten nines ten eights like every single hand imaginable with the spade so that's kind of where my head was yeah that's that's what i was thinking and then you know the third question that i always ask is is he capable of bluffing and obviously the answer was an easy yes court is is the most capable guy at this table to bluff me uh no one else would be i i think even capable of putting in a line like this with a bluff but Cordis and we have a bit of history playing day two so really that's everything that was going on in my head so all of these things kind of led me to call right and this is a big pot and if I win this pot, it's over 10 million. I have 12 million in chips. Amazing spot. I have around 80 bigs, basically. So it's it's a big pot. But now, with that all said, this is what I come to after making this decision is that, sure, Cord is capable of bluffing, and he has bluffs here. But given ICM implications, and given the table dynamics, and given, I think, my edge at this table, this is a marginal spot at the end of the day now, because it's just a flip. Am I wrong or am I right? If I am right sure i have good chips i have a good stack but this doesn't guarantee me a win or this doesn't even guarantee me a top three necessarily because there's a other big stacks court is still gonna have 13 mil there's jason there's others with a lot of chips so it's not gonna guarantee me anything meanwhile if i lose this pot if i make a mistake this is now i'm down to 2.1 million which is one of the smallest stacks the blinds are about to go up we're gonna be pretty short so that's the problem is that if I'm wrong here, I'm almost certain to now flip for my life, flip for 
basically six fifth place and trying to play short stacks poker when in reality if i fold this i still have 30 big blind plus that's more than enough at this final table this is 30 big blind plus in, in the final table is like 80 big blinds. It, it's a lot. And given the structure, we have an hour of playing at every level. So, you know, these are all the things now that I think about. And I think if I had thought about those things a little more, which I did, but again, we're playing this live. I have certain amount of things to think about. This is my first live stream final table. This is really my first time going through a decision like this. My decision was thinking more in terms of chip EV versus what's really, really profitable, which I think in the end is this is a marginal spot. Sure, I lost over 1.5 million in chips here. Okay, I still have a lot to play for with 5.1 million in chips versus, okay, this is a chip EV call against the guy that makes a lot of bluffs. I should call this. That's kind of my conclusion on this. This is a long one because yeah, this is the hand that basically decided the tournament for me. And yeah, I thought about this for a long time, guys. I thought about this for a long, long time and I end up flicking in the call and he has seven, six offsuit, which is just a heartbreak. But listen, sometimes, you know, I mean, that's the beauty of, of poker, right? Like every decision we make, um, every high equity decision we make, we have to learn from and we have to grow from. And honestly, I didn't look at this final table for a long time because it does still hurt me to this day because I thought that I could have done so much better given how great we started early on, given the table dynamics. I just thought I had a huge, huge advantage at this final table so this one hurt and this is something that i didn't want to look at for a while but at the end of the day we have to move on and th these are all the lessons that i wanted to share with you and these are the lessons that i will take when i make another big final table hopefully in the future right there are spots where sometimes we have to play so far outside of kind of gto and and the chip ev perspective and figure out hey this is what happens when i'm wrong this is what happens when i'm right and put it really really simply like that and put it very almost easy like that very simplistic where hey you know what i don't care if i get bluffed here because i have 5.1 million chips and i'm still going to win this tournament versus okay i have to make this call because i think he's bluffing me and he has way too many bluffs right so i don't know but that that said right if i made a call and i was right maybe i wouldn't have this discussion and maybe i go and win the tournament maybe that's a different discussion but after making this call these are the things that i probably thought about a lot so just wanted to share that with you guys and i know this was a long hand but basically this is the hand of the final table and we don't have much more so just wanted to get really in depth about this one and just really talk you guys through my process would love to know your kind of thoughts in the comments about how you would have played this hand uh, would you fold it on the flop would you have have played it differently would you fold it on the turn would you have done something different on the river obviously given the dynamics given the payout right the next pay jumps fifty two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars with two hundred fifty eight thousand dollars up top right there's a lot of money up at this final table so would you play this differently would love to know your thoughts but yeah this one hurts guys uh this one really does and he does make the call he's gonna get the bad news and cord's gonna win a massive pot here they go for put him back in the chip lead right yeah almost 10 million chips in that pot all right so nothing really happens um i don't think we play a single hand after that and we're just basically going to blind down the blind's gone up to 100k 200k we've gone a couple orbits at this point with basically no hands to play so we're just folding we're just folding and we have around i think one point yeah we have 1.2 million at this point so six big blinds and and we look at in the cutoff nine six suited for six big blinds and i actually want to look at this spot in gto wizard yeah we have six remaining let's go to the mtt icm final table six remaining and we are in the cutoff with six big blinds or let's look at one with five yeah, so five big blinds with 37 big blind button, small blind is 15, and big blind is 10. Even at five big blinds, we're going to see that 9-6 suited is not actually even close. So this is probably a major mistake. I would love to probably look at this in ICMizer as well, but we are seeing that 9-6 suited is not even close. Not even close. So this could be me just like being impatient, thinking that this is a good shove. Um, I'm actually surprised to see that like 
eight seven suited nine eight suited ten eight suited isn't even a shove that's pretty crazy to me i would probably simplify this and i don't really want to have like raises maybe i would i would just raise the four big blinds um with every single one of them obviously think basically saying that i'm going all in but yeah we had one Zhao was also short um similar in this dynamic she had a little bit more than me i believe so nine six suited guys is not a shove not a shove not even close but i decided to put it in i decided to put this one in and 1.2 million goes in there and cord wakes up with king queen suited in the small blind and jason fours so we need a lot of help going into this flop and the flop is ace seven five so we have equity we have backdoor flush draws and we need we have an eight to the nuts we have some outs we have some outs. And actually, given the calls, actual calls, no one has an ace. We actually have a lot of equity here. Any nine, any six, any eight, any running clubs are good. Really, really good. So we actually have a lot of help. No ace. The turns, the deuce of spades. So Cord now picks up a flush draw. We need help, guys. And we don't get it. The river's an ace of spades. So at this point, we know we're dead. And obviously, I'm... A little heartbroken inside. Yeah, I think the 9-6 suited, as we've seen in GTO Wizard, clearly not a shove, not even close. I'm actually surprised to, to see that. Again, I haven't really analyzed this final table because I've just been a little heartbroken. I've been staying away from it, <laughs> to say the least. But yeah, guys, this one, this one hurt. 9-6 suited, not a shove. Maybe we could have folded it a little bit more and seen what could have happened. But guys, that's all she wrote honestly very very anticlimactic for me in in a, in a way because we started so strong we started so strong we had 45 50 big blinds and it was just one hand one hand that basically decided this tournament and it's a hand that i will remember for a very very long time it's a one that i learned also a lot from so i don't know i think these are also always the growing pains of of a poker player i'm not sure when i will be back in a spot like this ever again but hey you know these are all the lessons that come with this game and i'm blessed in the first place to be at this final table and i'm very very happy that i was at this final table we are you know obviously any tournament like this you gotta run super super hot to get to even a place like this so we we did we really did we sun run to the final table and we scored our biggest cash fifty two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars so an amazing amazing score on my first week in dallas after moving here to pursue my passion of playing professional poker so guys this was a big one and yeah it, it hurts obviously it's very very bittersweet but looking back at it i'm still very very proud of how i played i'm still proud of the decisions that i made and the only way is is forward and i'm sure we'll be back as you guys know i'm gonna be putting in a lot of work we are playing a lot of cash now but hey i'm always a tournament player i always will be a tournament player so i'm sure we'll be back in a place like this again hope you guys enjoy this hand analysis there's gonna be a lot more coming your way we're gonna be on youtube a lot um so feel free to let me know what you think about this really the first time i've done something like this so it's not gonna be perfect but just gonna share with you guys everything um share all the live streams that i'm part of sure any study sessions that i'm a part of so gonna try to sh provide as much value here as much as possible so feel free put anything in the comments whatever you guys think you guys can roast me i don't care put in the comments like subscribe and see you guys next time